In this video I'm going to show you a few, probably 13 different ways of working with EV3 Python on the EV3 robot from Lego. And that's a lot of different demonstrations here, but of course there are many different ways of doing this because <laughs> basically writing a, a program is, is just uh, making um, a text file. So think how many text file editors there are for your platform, whatever it is. I'm using Windows 10, by the way, and I'm going to start with what I think is the most interesting um, workflow, and then I will give the complete list and we we'll take a more detailed look at each one. So here is like a, a preview of the most interesting way perhaps of working with the EV3, and you can see I'll just be using two programs here. Uh, SFTP Net Drive Free is going to allow me to map the EV3 to uh, Windows Drive letter here. It's a free program of course. You can see the IP address that I'll be using here. I have an Ethernet connection to my EV3 because I find that's the most stable kind of connection. In other words, I'm using an Ethernet cable connected to an Ethernet to USB adapter and then USB is plugged into the side of the EV3 brick. I'll be using the robot name and uh, the password corresponding to that is maker by default. You can see the um, drive is going to be mapped to the drive Y on my Windows PC and before I go any further let me point out here that I'll be accessing the robot folder from here but I could also if I click here I could also access the root folder even though I'm just connecting uh, using the robot name. So this connects very quickly and now that I've made that useful mapping I'm going to use um, a Python IDE. You can see already here th that I have a listing on Windows of uh, the, the contents of my, my robot uh, folder on the EV3. So I'm going to use a Python IDE or integrated development environment called Tony here. It's a simple one, rather like idle. I prefer it to idle, though I think usually when you work with idle you're typically working with two windows or more. In Tony it's just one. And here it is. I believe Tony is available for Windows and Linux and Mac OS X and maybe other platforms too. We'll get to that program in just a moment. And let's uh, open up then on the Y drive that we know is uh, actually the EV3 robot drive. So I'm going to open a file from there. We can access the Y drive, for example, here. We're already looking at it. Y drive. And we have the same list of Python scripts that we just saw. I'm going to take this one here called motor then. Open that up. And we're interested, of course, in, in making a, a file from scratch. The reason I opened up this script is just so that I can save some typing here. I'm selecting everything, copying everything. We're going to make a, a new Python script then on the EV3. And you can imagine I've just typed all of this in. And I'm going to save that now under the EV3 with the name, say, motor2.py. So we have our new file. And this workflow is so amazingly simple that I believe I should just be able to click play or run. And I'm kind of expecting you to hear the motors running. But I made a mistake. Uh, it says right here in, in my comments that, and this is a clue to what I'm doing in fact, is uh, before I try to run the file I have to start something called the remote Python call server on Brickman, which I forgot to do despite my own warning to myself. So I'm on Brickman now in the file browser. I'm going to start a file called rpic server, rpic underscore server dot sh. 
is the full name for that file, which must be made executable, by the way. That file starts up in about 30 seconds, so that gives me a few moments to explain uh, how I'm doing this workflow using RPIC Remote Python Call. If you want to do that, you have to install RPIC on the EB3 and on the uh, computer also, which is all very quick and easy. There'll be a link under this video to show how to do that. So you install RPIC on both, and then you need to start the RPIC server on the EB3, which is what I didn't do just now, but it's starting up as I speak to you. And this is a key line in the script that I'm using here. The Python file that this links to detects whether the script is being run on the EB3 or elsewhere. If it's being run on the EB3, it just imports uh, EB3 dev, etc. in the usual way. If it detects that the script is being run not on the EB3, but for example on my Windows PC, which is what I'm about to do, then it uses remote Python call RPIC to bring in the necessary modules from the uh, brick so that it can use them so that you can actually play the uh, the script from here so the uh, remote python call server is running now of course and i'm going to try to run my script again hopefully in a few seconds you will hear the uh, motors running so that's all working and I'm also going to try to run the same script that I just made called Motor2. I'm going to try to run that from Brickman on the EV3. To do that, I'm turning off now the server on the Brickman, just pressing the back button on the EV3 for a couple of seconds. That's very quick. And now I'm looking through the file browser for the file I just created. And this is it. So, will you hear the motor spin in a moment? The answer is... Uh, the answer is that all works just fine. And if you know your EV3 and your EV3 Python very well, you'll know that I seem to have skipped a step here, and that is when you make a Python script, you have to make it executable before you can run it from Brickman. So you might be wondering how did that file get marked as executable before I ran it on Brickman. And the answer in fact is on this line here. When I ran that script the first time from Windows, this line was run and it does what has to be done if you want to make a file executable. We, uh, from inside the Python script we're running a Linux command, change mode, chmod, change mode, plus x means make executable. And this part here finds out what is the name of the file. In my case, it was motor2.py. So this line overall, from within Python, it runs the Linux command, change mode, plus x, and the name of the file. So that's how the file got converted into an executable file. The first time I ran this file on Windows, the file was prepared for running on Brickman. Of course, if I hadn't run the file on Windows, I wouldn't be able to run it on Brickman because it would not have been made into an executable file. But anyway, this is a, a procedure a workflow that we'll come back to a bit later on in this video. The first option is to use a secure shell or SSH connection and a terminal-based text editor such as Vim to edit your scripts. This is not demonstrated in this video. This workflow is simple in principle, but in reality, for beginners, using a terminal-based text editor may be very difficult and annoying. So this is good for people who are familiar with Linux and like working in the terminal. And Vim is very much the preferred text editor for terminal-based text editing with serious users. The second option is to use SSH with a separate text editor. The advantage of this are that it's fairly simple. You can use colors to make the code more legible and you don't 
have any risk of trying to run the script from the text editor in contrast with the uh, third option that you're about to see. The disadvantage of this workflow is having to use the terminal which is distracting and annoying. Also there will be no automatic code completion or debugging because you're using a text editor and not a proper integrated development environment or IDE. This may be good for beginners, more advanced users might want better debugging etc. The third option is to use SSH with a Python integrated development environment such as IDLE, TONY or PyCharm EDU. This is fairly simple and can offer some debugging and code completion. The disadvantage is that you cannot use the IDE to run scripts normally on the EV3 directly. They have to be run from the terminal or from Brickman. This is a good workflow for beginners, but more advanced users might want better debugging. Fourth option is to use a Google Chrome SSH app such as Secure Shell or Termius. This is simple and it's nice to be able to work with the EV3 from a familiar program. It's also nice not to have to install a new program. On the other hand, for a beginner, text editors that run inside the terminal are difficult and unintuitive to use, as we have already said. This may be a good workflow for people who are very keen to program the EV3 from within Google Chrome. Fifth option is to map the EV3 to drive on the PC and use remote Python call storing the scripts on the EV3. This is the workflow that I showed you a preview of at the beginning of this video. This is potentially a very good option for beginners and also for the classroom since it avoids the need for students to work with a terminal. The disadvantages are that the way remote Python call works is a bit complicated and could cause scripts to run more slowly and also scripts may need modifying slightly for compatibility with RPIC. This is a good method for beginners and students in the classroom but it does need a bit of setting up including the installation of RPIC on the EV3 and on the computer. The sixth option is to map the EV3 to a drive on the PC and use RPIC storing the scripts on the PC. It's the same as option 5 then, but storing the scripts on the PC. This isn't demonstrated in this video. It could be useful in the classroom because students would then be able to save their work in their normal folder, which may be on a school network. There is no need for students to use a terminal emulator and scripts can be run from the Python IDE. As we said previously, the disadvantage of this method is that the RPIC is a bit complicated in its working, could cause scripts to run more slowly, scripts may need modifying slightly, and in this case you would probably want to copy the scripts to the EV3 so that they can be run from Brickman in addition to being run from the computer. This may be good for students in the classroom but does need a bit of setting up. Option 7 is to use an SSH app such as ConnectBot to connect to the EV3 from devices such as smartphones or tablets. This is not shown in this video. The advantages of this method are that you can then program the EV3 from just about any mobile device, a smartphone, a tablet, etc. using an SSH client. The disadvantages are that in general mobile devices are good for consuming content but not so good for creating content. Editing in a text editor in a terminal is difficult also, especially on a mobile device. But this is good for people who are determined to program the EV3 from a mobile device. Method 8 would be to use tethering. This is not demonstrated in this video because it's not yet ready. This could be a good option for beginners and for the classroom because the tethering connection is a very simple one but the ev3dev.com website doesn't explain how to do USB tethering and even Bluetooth tethering is only explained for Mac OS X. So we'll have to wait for this basically. Option 9 is to use IPython, also known as Jupyter, but I'm suggesting this is a poor option. It doesn't work well on the EV3, I understand, because the EV3 does not have enough 
memory or processing power. Option 10 is to use Adafruit Web IDE. It looks like a great option on their website for the Raspberry Pi, but unfortunately they haven't yet given instructions for using Adafruit Web IDE with the EV3. So we'll have to just hope that they will soon issue such instructions. Option 11 is to use Visual Studio Code from Microsoft, not to be confused with Visual Studio from the same company. The advantages are that this is an all-in-one solution, no need to use a separate terminal emulator. It's free and multi-platform working on Windows, Mac, OS X and Linux and has powerful coding features, especially something called IntelliSense. The disadvantages are that for use with the EB3, SSH or Secure Shell must be available, which is the case on Mac OS and Linux, but not on Windows. On PCs with 64-bit Windows 10, SSH can be made available by installing Windows Subsystem for Linux. When I tried using Visual Studio Code with EB3, all went well until I tried to run from Brickman some scripts that had been created in Visual Studio Code on Windows. They did not work, even though the files had been marked as executable. This is good then for advanced programmers, especially those using Mac OS X or Linux, provided the problem of running from Brickman can be solved. Option 12. If you have Windows 10, a 64-bit version, you could use Bash for Ubuntu for Windows to open an SSH connection to a terminal and then edit the Python script in a terminal-based text editor such as Nanu or Vim. This is obviously a variation of option 1 and is straightforward once Bash for Ubuntu for Windows, also known as Windows Subsystem for Linux or WSL, has been installed. Mac OS X and Linux already have SSH built in. The disadvantages of this workflow are that, once again, this option involves using a terminal-based text editor, which is always difficult for beginners. This would be good for Windows 10 users, uh, in the sense that this Bash for Ubuntu for Windows offers uh, other features in addition to SSH. Lots of Linux, uh, very basic Linux features, which Windows users might appreciate. Note that this option doesn't involve installing a full Linux installation within a so-called virtual machine. The last option in this video is to use the powerful and free Eclipse IDE and then to open a remote connection to the EV3 from within that program, edit the scripts in the proper IDE that this program offers and use the built-in terminal to run the script. The advantages are that this is an all-in-one solution, there's no need to use a separate terminal emulator. It's free and multi-platform, Windows, Mac, OS X and Linux, and has powerful coding features. The disadvantage would be that this is a very complex environment, too complex for beginners. Scripts still need to be run from the built-in terminal, or do they? Perhaps Eclipse makes it possible for scripts to be run on the server, that's to say the EV3. This may be a good option for advanced programmers. So the first workflow I'm going to demonstrate to you is the one you have probably used yourself, more or less. And that is, I'm going to use a secure shell connection, SSH. You could use PuTTY for this if you're using Windows, as I am, or you could use MobaX Term, which is what I prefer and which is on the screen right now. You can see I have connected to the EV3 before, sometimes with a Wi-Fi connection, sometimes with a USB connection, sometimes with an Ethernet connection. Right now my EV3 is connected with a USB connection, so I'm going to try to open up that connection by double-clicking. It takes a few seconds to establish the connection with the EV3. The reason that I like MobaX Term is that I have or will have a, a list here of the contents of my robot folder on the EV3 when there it is right there. 
and there are other features too which you will see as I use mobile XTEM as a kind of all-in-one package in fact which I find helpful so these are some of the scripts inside my robot folder right now you can see I also have some folders one of the folders is a PIX folder which you can read about on my website ev3python.com inside the PIX folder I have copied the files from the LEGO software in the BMP format and that means I can access these files from my EV3 Python programs which is uh, convenient. One of those files is called bomb.bmp by the way I'll be using it later. So a pretty standard way then of making and running a a Python file would be to do this. I'm going to make a new file in Mobex term. I can do that here. I'm going to call this new file fonts5.py because the script that I'm going to make is going to use fonts to write on the LCD screen of the EV3. So you can see the new file exists. As I point at that file, mobile X term shows me some information, including the permissions of the file at the end there, where it says RWRR. That means there are no X's, and that means this file is not marked as executable, and it needs to be marked as executable at some point before we can run the script on Brickman inside the EV3. So let me show you how to do that right away as if you didn't know the way to make a file executable on the terminal like this is to do chmod for change mode plus x meaning make executable and then the name of the file which I call fonts5.py if I do that then we don't see straight away that the X's are there but that's just because this folder listing is now out of date. If I update or refresh that folder and point at fonts5 again you can see the X's are there in the permissions which is what we want to see. Mobile XTERM gives me another way to change the permissions and that is to right click and choose permissions and you can see here the execute permissions are turned on so I originally I would have seen this as the permissions and you can also change the permissions here then as an alternative to chmod you can avoid having to memorize the exact format of that which is always somewhat annoying in Linux and you can do it like this instead to set the permissions as I said, this is the kind of all-in-one package, Mobile X Term Free Edition. So if I double-click this file, it will actually open the file in the default text editor of Mobile X Term, where I can type my uh, my Python script, which might look like something like this. The kind of classic EV3 Python script here, starting with the shebang which is necessary to make it possible for this script to run on the EV3 from Brickman. And uh, we're going to be running a motor here, a large motor, and we're also going to be using the LCD screen here to display the bomb picture that I spoke of earlier. And also we're going to draw some text onto the screen. I'd like you to notice the, the format here that I'm using to import everything from ev3dev.ev3. This way of importing means that when I create this M uh, large motor object, I don't have to precede that by ev3. I don't have to type ev3.large motor here, which makes the, the script, the code, a little shorter and easier to read the alternative being up here, which I'll have to show you later on, it would be import ev3dev.ev3 as ev3. And then you have to type the ev3 down here. You'll see what I mean later on. Anyway, I think this is actually a valid uh, script here. So I'm going to save it. 
you know this this being a text editor there's no run option here of course but at least mobax term does have colors to help us uh, see the structure of the script it's recognized that we are working with python here from the python extension.py it knows this is python so it can color appropriately so how do I actually run the script then? Well, as you know, we can run a script by typing here Python 3. Of course, you're using Python 3 and not the older version Python 2, which is obsolescent now. So we are using fonts5.py. Actually, this would kind of work if I run this now, but it wouldn't work perfectly because I'm using the LCD screen and unless you do something uh, special before you use a script like that, there's going to be a problem in that the Brickman on the EV3 is going to grab back control of the LCD before it should do because the instruction on that script, as you may have noticed, was to make the uh, bomb and text appear for six seconds and it's unlikely that uh, Brickman would allow that to happen without grabbing back the control of the LCD too early unless I type another command you can read about this also on my website eb3python.com what you have to do if you have a script that uses the LCD is you have to type sudo chvt6 and that will give the uh, control of the LCD screen to this script. Usually when you type sudo commands, you have to type in a password. For this command chvt, I have removed the need to type in the password for reasons that I will explain later. So I can enter that. It didn't ask me for a password, but uh, I can tell you looking at the uh, screen of the EV3 that it no longer shows the Brickman interface now. It shows uh, it's pretty much blank with some tiny text at the top. So that means we're ready now to run this Python 3 script called fonts5.py. And you probably hear the motor run as this starts up. It starts up rather slowly, this kind of a 10 second delay as the Python interpreter loads up and then you'll hear the motor run and then hopefully the picture will be displayed and the text will appear on top of that but you won't see the screen because I'm not filming it for you anyway I'm starting that uh, now and there's quite a delay then before the motor runs assuming this works And there on the LCD screen of the EV3, I have my picture and I have my text, Hello World. Of course, that works for me because I have the pictures available in the Pix folder, but it wouldn't work for you unless you also had the pictures available in the Pix folder, as explained on my website, ev3python.com. So that's uh, fair enough, but not really very satisfactory. I mean, we can do better. By the way, the picture that I'm looking at on the EB3 screen as I talk to you is uh, is this. This is a screen capture of uh, what I'm looking at. It's the bomb and the words, hello world, right there. So, going back to mobile X term, let's see whether we can do better. It's not ideal to write Python scripts in a text editor when there are available specialized programs called Python IDEs, that's integrated development environments, which give you extra features such as uh, code completion, where you begin typing a word and the, the environment can uh, guess the, the rest of the word for you, or we can do debugging, for example, other features like that. So it certainly makes sense to use a Python eye when you're writing Python scripts. I, on my website, was recommending for a while PyCharm. PyCharm 
is available in multiple versions. The full version is not free. It's very powerful, probably used by many professionals, but it's not free. And then we have two free versions called Community Edition and EDU. The EDU, of course, is written for beginners. I'm usually addressing beginners with these videos, so I have been recommending that. But ultimately, I think it's still uh, a heavyweight program, even though the interface looks simple. It takes a while to start up, and it has some annoying things about it. So probably you should be using something simpler. The Python IDE that comes with Python is called IDLE, but I'm not too keen on that. I discovered recently a Python IDE that I do like. I think it's called Tommy. We can change then the, the behavior that we'll get when we double-click one of these files by going here into the Settings menu. If we configure this, we can see that in Mobile Xterm we have the option of using a different editor. Oh, I guess I have to go here. There it is on my computer. Tony. I said Tommy. It's Tony. So that's done. And that means that now if I double click the same file, and now we see the same file opening up in Tony. And it has uh, already, we can see it has line numbering, which you might want. I think you can turn that off if you don't want it. And you can see that there's a, a run menu here with a possible uh, possibility of doing some debugging. There is also autocomplete available here somewhere. And we have a shell window so that we can get uh, feedback directly here. But a lot of this doesn't actually work because if I click here, run to run this, we're getting error messages here. This is running on the PC after all. So it it can't find these uh, things that are on the on the brick. So even if you edit your your script here, you will still have to go back to the terminal to actually run the program or else of course you can you can run the program from from Brickman. So we still haven't got a, a really neat solution, I feel. Another way of using SSH is not to use PuTTY, not to use the mobile X term here, but you can do the same kind of thing in Google Chrome, which you may well be familiar with, at least on Windows you can. So I'm going to close this mobile X term completely. I'll close Tony as well. And you can see here that we have Google Chrome open now. And I'm looking at my apps. And one of those apps, maybe I got it from the web store, I don't remember, but it's a secure shell app. So if I double click that, you can see that available right there in Google Chrome, we have the possibility of uh, using SSH. I've already used this uh, before. so. I have a connection here with a name, EV3 via USB. It's the same IP address that you saw earlier. We'll be using the robot folder. And if I click Enter, I'm expecting this to connect properly to the EV3. But the password that goes with robot is Maker, as you know. So this seems to be working. I'll get a list of the contents of my robot folder, ls. And that works also. And you can see there that we have uh, the file that I made a few moments ago called fonts5.py. I think the difference between the white and the green colors here would be that green is marked as executable and white is not. You remember, I made fonts5 executable. So I'm going to run that now as I did before, Python 3, just to show you it can be done. I don't actually think this is as good as mobile X term. We don't have the folder contents permanently visible down the left, for example. We don't have the option of right-clicking and um, changing permissions. We don't have a one-click uh, to make a new file and so on. 
but if you really like Google Chrome you might find this uh, helpful. So I'm going to try to run my file fonts5.py directly from Google Chrome and again we have to wait uh, 10 or 15 seconds for the Python interpreter to load up and then I think you'll hear the uh, the motor spin and the text is flashing on the uh, screen just briefly but I forgot to do the um, pseudo anyway that's kind of working but I still think we can do better the really exciting option for EB3 Python is to be able to use something called Remote Python Call, or RPyC. And I'll put more information about that on my website very soon. But I've already installed RPyC on my Windows uh, PC. There's um, a program you can download for that. And I've installed it on my EV3 as well, so it's ready to go. And let's assume then that you are a student and you want to uh, write a Python script in the simplest possible way. What you would like to be able to do is to use a Python IDE of your own choice. It could be Tony, Idle, PyCharm, whatever you like. And we'd like to be able to make a new file here, write a Python script, and then just run it. We saw that this it's a Python IDE. It has a run option here, which wasn't working before. Perhaps we can make it work. So the, the code here that I'm putting in in a moment, I need to make a, a new file, of course, here. So this is the, the new script. I'm pa pasting in some code here that you could imagine perhaps a student typing. It's more slightly more complex than what we saw before, although we can see some of the same text. We have the instructions here again for running the motor, for example. We have instructions for showing that bomb picture and the text. We have a few extra lines as well. And also a few lines that are not needed anymore. The lines about importing uh, ev 3 devev 3 uh, and so on. Some of the lines you saw before are missing. So this is probably the most important line here and you can see we are going to import some stuff from another file called rpic module which I made and I can show you that and the way that I'm going to show you that and the way that I'm going to work with this which makes it so easy to work with on Windows is I'm going to set up the robot directory of the EV3 as a drive letter on Windows and you can do that with a program called SFTP Net Drive Free. I can see I'm already connected in fact so you just uh, put in the IP address for the USB connection put in your folder that you want to work with the password that corresponds to that which is maker and then you just uh, click uh, click uh, connect which I've already done and it has uh, connected up for me. It says last available here. So it's it's mapped the contents of the robot directory to drive Z, in fact, which is why earlier on when we were looking at the uh, Windows Explorer, you may have noticed that it says my live my my book live here, which is wrong, but it's drive Z, which is which is correct. So this again is the contents of my of my robot directory already it can do things that I couldn't do before like uh, I click on this uh, this uh, PNG screen capture from the EV3 and I've got the the preview right there and of course renaming and moving files around is extremely easy when you're working with the Windows Explorer like this I can go into those pictures again and I can go back out up a level like this and so on and so on so that means that in Tony, when I'm ready to save this file, I can save just simply save this to the the Z drive, in fact, 
and the Z drive, this one, or I can get it through the the network as well. Or this is the same thing. There it is there, different ways of getting it, it's all the same. And I'm going to call this one uh, RPIC demo four dot py and by saving then onto drive Z we've actually saved straight onto the EV3 into the robot folder. Is this uh, ready to run then? Well, perhaps it is, but we should take a look at this first, the RPIC module which is being imported here, so we can get a better feel for how this is working. The RPIC module is this on my Windows PC. I've set an association, so these Python files.py, they're going to open in, in Tony. So here we have the, the two files that we're interested in. This is the R Pi C module file and you can get a feel for how it works. It's not extremely long. It uh, tries to get the name of the host and that's because we're trying to figure out here where is this script running? Is it running on the EV3 or is it running on somewhere else, for example on my PC? So we get the name of the host. If the name of the host is EV3 dev that means we're running on the on the EV3 and we don't actually need to use anything fancy here. We don't need to use this remote Python call thing, RPIC. So we're just going to import in the usual way. You'll notice here that I have uh, a beep sound playing in, in this case so that we can be sure that the, the script has detected that we're running on the EV3. It's just like um, an indication of that. And if we're not running on the EV3, then we must be running on something else or somewhere else, like the like the PC. So in that case, we're going to make these uh, these connections. You remember earlier how Tony couldn't run the script because it was running on the PC and didn't have the possibility of using what was on the brick. Well, if we can make these connections like this, then it, it becomes possible. This is in a module, so that you don't need to worry too much about the details of this. It can be a kind of black box, but that's roughly how it works. So we're going to use this module here to detect what we are running on, the EV3 or the PC basically, and uh, set things up appropriately. I'll come back to this a little bit later on. So here we have the the code for running the motor again. If you are using RPIC, then because we're using this kind of statement, or this one here rather, we are going to have to include the EV3 letters. It's, it's a tiny little difference here, but I do have to include this this EV3 and here also to type in EV3 in order for this to work. You can't avoid that when you're using RPIC, but it's still very easy to understand this code. If we want this script to run perfectly, we have to run a Linux command, as I said earlier. That Linux command is sudo chvt6, but we said we would try to avoid using the terminal because the student doesn't want to be distracted here from Python programming. So we want to stay in the Pythonide 100% uh, if we can, and it is possible to do that then because within a Python script you have the possibility of running Linux commands, in fact. That's what this line does. So we're saying if we are running on the EV3, and only in that case, we're going to run this uh, this Linux command, the system command, sudo chvt6, and you can see now why I took away the obligation of uh, using a password with sudo, because that would have made this, uh, this script rather complicated. So this will just run in a very straightforward fashion. Why don't we need this if we're not running on the EV3? It's because if we're not running on the EV3, then we're using RPIC, and RPIC actually takes control of the LCD, so we don't need to do anything special to take control of the LCD. We already have it. So 
this is pretty much the same as what we had before except for the EV3 appearing right there and uh, we're going to keep this on the screen for six seconds um, I've got these extra lines here to clear the LCD screen uh, afterwards and I've included this line that says if we are running this on the EV3 we'll also give uh, control of the LCD screen back to Brickman which is what the sudo chvt1 command does don't forget I've s changed my chvt so that when sudo is used on it no password is needed and that will be explained on my website at some point so perhaps this is ready to go now let's see did I miss anything I should explain these lines also maybe they're the most difficult lines or maybe not because we recognize here this this code that we have uh, seen before we know is to make the file executable we wouldn't need that running here with our PyC but if we want to run a script on the uh, EV3 later on the, the script has to be an executable file so how are we going to run chmod plus x if we are determined not to use a terminal again we have to do it right here in the Python script I would have liked to include this code in the module up here but I haven't yet found out a way of uh, getting the file name to be correct without including it right here this this code right here uh, finds out what is the name of the file rpicdemo4.py in this case so when this line runs it runs the Linux command chmod space plus x space and then this gives the name of the file rpicdemo4.py in this case so it's going to try to make the file executable for possible future attempts to run this script on the EV3 anyway let's see whether this runs don't forget I haven't used the terminal at all to make this file or to put in the code or to save it or anything so the big question is does it work? the answer is no because I've forgotten something uh, and this is uh, you'll see this sometimes if you use RPIC that uh, the no connection could be made because the target machine actively refused it and that uh, that means I've done something stupid of course and this the stupid thing is that we are using our PC here but just because it's uh, installed on the PC and on the EV3 it doesn't mean it's actually running yet I have to actually start the our PC server running on the EV3 before I do anything else and it is ready to run it's just a, a regular file here it's this one right here uh, it's a shell command but it's um, a shell command which we can run on Brickman just like we can run a, a Python command as long as it's an executable file which it is so let's run that on the EV3 so I'm using Brickman now I'm in the file browser I'm about to select the uh, rpi server.sh and I'm launching that now and I'll tell you when it's actually ready when some text appears on the LCD screen it actually takes uh, probably about 30 seconds for this which is kind of uh, annoying so it's the server running yet the answer is no but in a moment there it is it's ready now that must have been uh, about 20 or 30 seconds so the RPIC server is now running on the brick I started it from Brickman and I'm hoping now that when I try this a second time that it will run and I'm hoping to prove to you also that it will run very fast when I click on this I'm expecting you to hear the sound of the motor uh, just a couple of seconds afterwards let's try that if it works the, uh, the LCD screen is displaying the bomb and the text uh, for six seconds that worked correctly I can tell you of course we didn't hear any beep when this script was running 
we wouldn't expect to because you remember the beep sound is for when the program detects that it's running on the brick and it's not it's running on the PC at the moment so that's all in order okay so the the script runs uh, directly from the Python IDE just by clicking the run button here we haven't used the terminal yet as long as I can prove to you that we can run this same script from the EV3 we will have proved that we can do EV3 Python programming at least from a student point of view without ever having to use the terminal of course the teacher would need to use the terminal from time to time to set things up but the student experience in the classroom could be uh, completely terminal free except for the couple of words of Linux that have been embedded into the Python code here. You start up your Python IDE, make a new file, type your script, save your file, press run, and you're done. Basically it's that simple. Again, I should include in that list that you have to turn on the RPIC server on the uh, brick before you try to run the program. So I'm going to stop the RPIC server on the brick right now by pressing the back button for a, a few seconds. And I now have Brickman back. The RPIC server is no longer running. So I should be able to run this now from the brick. We have code after all, which has hopefully set the file to be executable. So I'm using the file browser on the brick right now as I speak to you, looking for this file called RPIC demo 4 and if I can find it here it is I'm ready to run it from Brickman I'll count down from 3 so you can hear the delay between launching it and hearing the sound of the motor uh, 3, 2, 1 I've launched the, um, the script I see tiny text on the LCD screen usually takes about 10 seconds for the interpreter to load up and then there goes the motor on the screen the bomb picture has appeared the text has appeared hopefully for five seconds there it is it's just gone off and I've got Brickman back and the difference between that script running and the scripts running before of course is that you heard a beep there and the beep we know comes from here it comes from this code detecting that the code is being run from the brick so in fact we weren't using RPIC at all for that we were just importing the the different things in the usual way so that's uh, that's all. Of course, I haven't demonstrated that this file that I've made here, demo for, if I were to start up the terminal now, of course, I could also run the same script from the terminal. Would you hear the beep in that case? Would it be running from the brick? The answer is yes, it would be running directly on the brick. It wouldn't be using RPIC, in other words. So what do you think of this RPIC solution? I think the fact that it allows you to avoid using a terminal and work entirely with the uh, chosen Python IDE on the on the PC is a, is a huge advantage and really makes it possible to have a very straightforward experience of Python programming with the EV3 without any distractions. I hope I've convinced you of that and you can expect to see more details of RPIC on my website then eb3python.com. In this little demonstration I'm going to show you Bash on Ubuntu on Windows. That's something you can install if you have a Windows 10 64-bit edition up to date. It also is called I believe Windows System for Linux or WSL and you can see a link uh, below this video. So I'm going to the start menu of um, of my Windows 10 machine. I'm choosing Bash on Ubuntu on Windows. I get this. This isn't uh, a virtual machine then running Ubuntu. It's a kind of subset just designed to make Bash available to you, which I understand is something like a, a command line in, in Linux. 
So that means, uh, well, first of all, let me show you that you need to often right click here on the title bar to do things like copy and paste. Or if you want to change the uh, default, I'm going to change the default size here, make it easier for you to see. It seems like that doesn't have effect straight away, so I will uh, restart. So you can see the text is larger now, and I can type in here commands, bash commands, such as uh, SSH, which uh, I'm going to use to connect to my robot folder on my EV3. My EV3 is connected with the uh, Ethernet connection at the moment, an Ethernet cable connected to uh, Ethernet to USB adapter that is. Seems to me to be the most uh, stable type of connection. And it has this IP address then for the Ethernet connection. Password of course is Maker. And straight away you can see I'm um, connected to the robot folder of the EV3. Don't forget this is Windows and uh, Bash is not normally available. It is normally available in, in Mac OS X and Linux, so you don't have to install this WSL system. But that's what I had to do to make Bash available here on my Windows 10 computer. So now that I'm in here, I can, for example, list the contents of this directory. I can see there's a, there's a Python script in there, for example, called motor b test. If I want to modify that, I'm going to do that with a, a terminal-based text editor, and these for beginners are terrible for Windows users, very unintuitive, to be avoided really if possible, but uh, I guess people who have used them a lot start to like them, especially one called Vim. I'm using a simpler one called Nano, but Vim is the most popular amongst serious users and also the most unintuitive and the most difficult to learn, no doubt. So I'm going to be opening and modifying this Python file called motorbtest.py. Everything you do here is case sensitive, which is not normally the case on Windows. And I'll just change something here, for example, when this motor runs for the first time, instead of running for five seconds. I'll make it run for three. So that's done and I just want now to save my changes. So here are the, the hints and it tells me that to write out the file it's control O oddly enough. So control O. It asks me what name do I want for this file. I'll you keep the same name overwriting the existing file and uh, control X we can see bottom left is to exit nano control X. So now I should be able to easily run the file that I just modified. It's a Python 3 file, Python, Python version 3. So Python 3 space the name of the file, case sensitive, motorb test.py and And you can hear the motor is running, so that's uh, that successfully ran that script. But ultimately, for a beginner, I don't recommend working with a terminal-based text editor like this. So let me exit this uh, completely. Close this window. Now I'm going to show you how you can use Eclipse with the PyDev plugin to work with uh, EV3 Python. Eclipse is unfortunately a rather complex uh, program, but I haven't really been able to get this workflow working with uh, similar programs like NetBeans or Notepad++ or Visual Studio Code. In each case it seems to almost work, but not quite. In this case, 
it works. So I've added the PyDev plugin. I may have added some other plugins. I really don't recall. Maybe I'll make a, a video at some point how to use Eclipse with EV3 Python in more detail. You can see I've already connected to the EV3 uh, over here via my Ethernet connection. So I'm going to do that again. Right click here and choose connect. I'm connecting. There's the IP address of the EV3 via Ethernet. I think I'm connected. I'm going to try to display what is in my home folder. In other words, the robot folder. These are all the uh, Python scripts in my folder, my robot folder. For example, I have this Python script here. Very simple script for running a motor. Double click that and it opens easily. Notice that I'm not using PuTTY and I haven't mapped the robot folder to a Windows drive letter either. So this is really seems to me about as simple as it can get. Uh, if I want to run this, I can't run this as if it was a local file. It's going to use the local version of Python, which doesn't know anything about EV3 dev. If I click the run button here and try to run it with the local version of Python, I'm going to get a lot of errors such as device not connected and so on. So I need to run it from a terminal. And I have a button here to open a terminal. If I didn't see that button, I might be able to get it by doing Windows Show View other terminal here. But I do have this button visible, so I'm opening a terminal. You can see, because I've used this before, that I'll be using SSH, the IP address of the v 3 via Ethernet is here, robot maker, etc, etc. I've saved the password, so it shouldn't ask me for it. Now you can see I have a terminal down here. I'm connecting to the EV3 and the connection is established. And now I can run that program in the usual way. Python 3. Simple motor dot py and I guess you'll hear the motor running in a moment. So that all works. I haven't shown you how to create a new file, for example. So let's do that. Here it is, new file. And I'm going to call the new file simple motor 2py It'll be based on the last one. So there is the file appearing in the list of files in the robot folder. I'm going to save some typing here by taking all this code copying it and pasting it into the new file. Here's the new file opening up. It's empty. I'll paste it in here. I'll modify that time of six seconds to two seconds. Save my changes. Control S or file save. Notice when I made the new file that I made it here. I didn't do file new in the file menu. I went here and right clicked and chose new. So this again should be ready to run here in the terminal. Now it's got the new name, Simple Motor 2, and you should hear the first motor running for a shorter time, just two seconds the first time. That concludes that demonstration. I think it's a neat way of working with the EV3. Not perfect. Uh, the debugging possibilities here are limited. 
and you just get some feedback here from via the terminal but it'd be really nice to be able to run the program here and debug in a in a in a in a more normal way and that may be possible but i haven't figured it out yet maybe you can help me somehow in conclusion for beginners i'm convinced that workflows that require you to use a terminal based editor in red on this page are not ideal since such editors are initially so awkward and unintuitive to use for use in the classroom i'm convinced that the easiest workflow for the students is the rpc based workflow. But using R by C is a rather unconventional way of programming with EV3 Python and requires a bit of setting up. Eclipse makes it possible to do EV3 Python programming with a powerful IDE, a built-in terminal, and a file browser that can connect directly to the EV3 without needing to map the EV3 to a Windows drive letter. But Eclipse is a complex program which requires quite a lot of setting up, so this may not be the ideal approach for beginners. Many of the other workflows have their merits, otherwise I wouldn't have mentioned them. So it's up to you to make a decision based on your experience and your situation. Good luck to you.